Listen, I had to call you because your download, your reasoning on the music business, what's coming from Jamaica, how it's being spread across Europe, your commentary, yeah, yeah your commentary has gone viral. So I had to call yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, man, I know that, man. Everything gone viral, you know. When you're speaking the truth, you know, because claims that him is the godfather of our Jamaica music here in England, you know. And I know that you is the man who must be the Gradigan in Jamaica, right? And yeah. What he's saying is not telling the truth. Actually, let me let me tell you how Rodigan in Jamaica came about. Back in the day, David Rodigan was working on Capital Radio, and I marveled. Yeah. I marveled that there was this reggae show in London. So I said to David Rodigan, "You come to Jamaica one year, and I will come to London. And every time we." meet on a show, we would expo the music. So the music was the expo. It wasn't Barry G and it wasn't Rodigan. But I must tell you, Sir Lloyd, I must tell you, Coxon, it has changed yeah. dramatically. It has changed. Yeah, but, yeah, because what happened, David Rodigan used to come to our sound system dance, right? And he learned what we was doing radio, you understand? But lately, music here in England and he's not ruling it. You understand? Some people, some people feel, for example, Jacoby is somewhere in the world right now. He feels you're too hard on Rodigan. He feels, he feels you're disrespectful to him. Me, I'm not disrespectful disrespectful to Radigan. Radigan is disrespectful to, to our Jamaica music and our Jamaica people. For Radigan to come on the British television here in England and say that the people of Jamaica don't even know about their music like him, that's a disgrace. And you have people in Jamaica that give David Radigan award for the upbringing of reggae. David Radigan wasn't here when reggae was being upbringing. He just come and join this thing down there the other day. He's fortunate that because he's a white man, he get more perks on the radio, right? More than sound system. But sound system is the people who do, who do all the work and bust the artists here in the UK. Let us, let us track Coxon. Let us track the work of sound systems in the UK. The blues dances, yeah. all the parties in London, let us go back to the days when it was the sound system that reminded Jamaicans of Baka Yard. Take us to those days. Of course, because the sound system from 1950, sound system been playing here and playing Jamaican music, right? We came into the basement with people take the furniture out of their house to keep, because we had to create imply, um entertainment for our people here. We go to a lot of police brutality to play our Jamaican music and to entertain our Jamaican people here. That time Radigan was nowhere about to be found. You understand? So, so you we do we do a lot of it. Even to Europe. We are the first set of sound system that go into Europe and most regular music in Europe. For anybody know any name about David Radigan, right? I don't respect David Radigan when it comes to our music because he's not doing anything for our music. Our music is doing something for him. I understand? Share with us, as far as you can analyze, Sir Coxon, about how many sound systems are in the UK right now? Right now, I would say we used to have about nearly 600 sound systems. I would say it come down now to nearly 450 sound system that is still here in the UK playing today, right? And to think that, to think that you can say that out of all these 450 sound system that left playing in England here now, David Radigan as a white man is the head of all of us. 
never could never be. We represent our Jamaica music day in, day out, right? Red, Red Radigan just come into our regular thing since you was him in Jamaica and him get the confidence, him come. And the things that he is saying about our people and our music, right? We're not going to stand up and make him say that because we know that he doesn't represent our Jamaica music like us. It is our Jamaican artist that met David Radigan going around the world and saying that him is the best, right? And the music that David Radigan is playing now cannot help our Jamaica in record industry because he's going around the world and playing special. And as I said, you can buy special in the shop. We the sound system, we play the, our Jamaica music so people can love it and go into the record shop and buy it. That's what we do. You understand? Tell us about those great years, how you used to get the music from Jamaica. When Dennis Brown was alive, the hottest Dennis Brown, Cox and Sound System got it. And over the years, then we went into the DJs. You, Roy, the godfather of all DJs, share with us the wonderful story, Coxon, how songs used to get to England. Mary G, we used to send, we used to send our money to Randy's to buy 45. We send our money to Caribbean Record at Orange Street to get 45, and we used to get them back through the, through the post. But as soon as time go by and, and so Coxon sound develop, I start to fly to Jamaica and cut tune. I, I spend the most money into Jamaica, King Tubby's, R.E.J. everywhere, cutting Jamaica music and bringing them back to England and playing the music in advance before it was released. But we play Jamaica vocal because if we are going to bust any Jamaica artist, we have to play the vocal, not special. Like what Radigan is doing around the world and playing, he's playing special. Special does not reflect the true ability of our Jamaica music. Special is a gimmick thing, right? When you're clashing for one night and something. We play Jamaica serious music, Dennis Brown, Gregory Isaac, Marcia Griffith, all the great Jamaican artists, we play their vocal so that the people can like the vocal, Germany, Ireland, France, everywhere we go and play, we play the vocal, so people can like it. So when David Radigan come now and he's playing special, that the Jamaica artist them is making special and singing his name on the special, right? And he's going around the world and playing the special that the Jamaica artist singing his name. He's getting bigger than the Jamaica artist, and right now he gets so brave, that the things that he's speaking about, we and we don't make a million. We won't stand up and take that because we don't rate him. You know our music like how we rate our Jamaican sound system men them in this country. We are the backbone of the advertisement of Jamaica music, right? You have a long you have a long story, Sir Lloyd Coxon. You have a hold on, you have a long story of the days when it was so cold in London, so cold in England, and the black people and the white people came together in a blues dance. Tell us about those years when the sound system would string up and you had the basement sessions, black people and white people came together, no fuss, no fight. Tell us about the history of some of those great get-togethers. Right? We teach black people and white people to dance to Jamaica music into the same dance hall in one love and one harmony, right? The hippie that was here in England, the white hippie, we teach them about Jamaica music and they love it and start to dance it, right? So when I'm when I'm looking out against David Radigan, I, I, I have no prejudice. I have no prejudice against white people because white people support me. We run a multiracial sound over the years, right? Here in England, right? Where black and white people come together and dance to the regular music and they love it and go and buy it, right? So we've been coming from the basement where police, we go to police brutality, we go to all kind of brutality just to play our music here in England. 
and to see today a little white man can jump up and say that is him this and this we won't stand for that right uh, the white man don't respect us and we won't respect him when it comes to our music we are jamaican and we go through the most brutality to play our red music to make people love it right it is fascinating when you talk about that documentary and what David Rodigan has said. To be honest, we have not heard that in Jamaica, so we, we're not able to comment on it. I would, love, I would love to get a copy of that interview, that documentary. But putting that aside, what, what I'd like to find out from you is, I want you to analyze the music that you used to get in London back in the day and compare what you're getting today from the younger artists. How would you compare it, Coxon? Well, listen, the music that we used to get early on from 70s coming down has changed. I think Jamaica has lost its creativity in the rhythm department because you have one million new lyrics but it's, you can identify that they are coming at the same old rhythm that was gone before. So we lost the creativity in the rhythm department, although we have a lot of brand new lyrics. So, so it's a different ball game. The music today is not half as good as what we used to have from 70s coming down to 80s. So what you're saying is, what you're saying, Coxon, what you're saying, and this is very interesting, they are putting new lyrics on the same old rhythms that made hits already. Yeah, we lost the creativity in the rhythm department. And I think it's because from the digital age come, and people not going, going into the studio and laying rhythm like first, right? We lost that, right? And we lost the, the, the beauty and the melody of the rhythm completely. You know, like when Sly and Robbie are like part to go into Channel One or Harry J. Sud and lay down, lay down the rhythm and then vice on the rhythm. That push melody, we lost it, right? We lost it completely, you know? I want you to... And, and one, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You, you were saying another point. Yeah, no, what I'm saying, right? In Jamaica, when Jamaica was pressing the music, making the music and pressing it, right? It was great because all the shops around the world was open. Since Jamaica closed down all the record press and stopped pressing the record, the people here that have records shop can't get regular music to sell. So all, most of the shop is closed around the world. Only a few shops is left open. You know what I mean? So we match up a great thing that we had in Jamaica. We never have to come to foreign. We could have pressed our music in Jamaica and people would come and buy the same way. So uh, what we do, everybody bring the tape to foreign and nothing, nothing, nothing is done. There, there, is shut up, you know? there, there's one thing, there is one thing I must have you clarify before you go. I am honored to have Sir Lloyd Coxon, a champion sound from the UK, on the telephone line live on Mellow FM right now. Barry G, I've never in my years had the chance to interview Coxon, there's one thing I want you to clarify. Some people are misunderstanding you and trying to put a color thing to your point about Rodigan's involvement in reggae. I want you to clarify the point you're making about black, white, reggae from Jamaica. Some persons are misunderstanding you. Clarify for me, Lloyd. Yeah. Well, listen to me, Barji. All the people who know me know me that I don't have any prejudice against white people. But you see, when you speak about white people, the first card that they draw is a prejudice card, right? They speak about us, they call us all kind of black bastard, black this and that, right? And we, we sup it up. Anytime we have an argument against any white people, they draw the race card, right? I have nothing to do with racing. I live in England long. And half of my crowd is white crowd, the multiracial crowd, right? But what I'm talking about is one individual and how he's trying to treat our regular business. And he's not the head of our regular business. 
uh, it does not represent our Jamaica reggae in the true form. Yeah, man, big, big up yourself, you know, big respect to you, you know. Listen, yeah. How are you? I had to call you because your download, your reasoning on the music business, what's coming from Jamaica, how it's being spread across Europe, your commentary, yeah, yeah your commentary has gone viral. So I had to call yeah, you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Working on Capital Radio. And I marveled, yeah. I marveled that there was this reggae show in London. So I said to David Rodigan, you come to Jamaica one year and I will come to London. And every time we meet on a show, we would expo the music. So the music was the expo. It wasn't Barry G and it wasn't Rodigan. But I must tell you, Sir Lloyd, I must tell you, Coxon, it has changed yeah. dramatically. It has changed. Yeah, but, yeah, because what happened, David Radigan used to come to our sound system dance, right? And he learned what we was doing. Radio, you understand? But lately, he was here in England and he's not ruling it. You understand? Yeah, man, I know that, man. Everything gone viral, you know? When you're speaking the truth, you know? Because claims that him is the godfather of our Jamaica music here in England, you know? And I know that you is the man who bust David Radigan in Jamaica, right? Yeah. And what he's saying is not saying the truth. Actually, let me, let me tell you how Radigan in Jamaica came about. Back in the day, David Radigan was... Some people, some people feel, for example, Jacoby is somewhere in the world right now. He feels you're too hard on Rodigan. He feels, he feels you're disrespectful to him. Me, I'm not disrespect, disrespectful to Rodigan. Rodigan is disrespectful to our Jamaica music and our Jamaica people. For Rodigan to come on the British television here in England, 